No, probably nobody who stands out in, 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 in sort of uh, in, in Norwegian history quite as much as the founders of the United States. And that is partly because several of these founders later beca became presidents of the United States and, 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 and made significant contributions and, and, and are famous in part because of that. Um, but there were, uh, there were prominent people uh, among the Norwegian founders. I, I mentioned, I, I believe, Falsen, Christian Magnus Falsen, who probably was the most Madison-like uh, 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 framer of the Norwegian Constitution. He was one of the uh, he was one of the authors of one of the constitutional drafts. The Constitutional Assembly had a whole set of con draft constitutions at its, at its disposal when it started deliberating, and the most influential one was the one that Falsen drafted. He didn't get his way on all issues. He, didn't get, he wanted a bicameral legislature much like the US, and he didn't quite get that. But in lots of ways, he had more influence on, on the Constitution than probably just about anybody else. Um, uh, there, was, uh, there were other people, like, for example, uh, Nikolai Vergon, who was the father of the Norwegian poet that many of you may have heard about. Uh, um, and, uh, and, 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 and he was probably responsible for better or worse for the, the sort of illiberal parts of Article <laughs> 2 of the Norwegian Constitution. Um, and, and, and there were a number of other, uh, other luminaries in, in, in that constitutional assembly. But of course, since Norway didn't have a presidential system, no, nobody became president. And in fact, none of these... Uh, and none of these characters uh, became, for example, uh, as far as I know, and Ola, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember them being prominent cabinet ministers after eight, 1814. Um, one of them, Vedl Jarlsberg, continued to play an important role in politics, but he was often on the losing side of the battles that were going on, or the battles, or the debates that were going on at the Constitutional Assembly in 1814. So if I had to pick one person, I'd say Falsen was hmm. the, the, the main architect. Could I support the f choice Please. of Falsen? Because Falsen is really important and is even more important than many think he, he wrote the most important draft. And what is really important, he started writing it while the Danish prince still thought he should declare himself as an absolute king. So Falsen sort of started the whole race towards the constitution. Then. Uh, at Eidsvoll, at the Constitutional Assembly, he was chairing the committee which really drafted the Constitution, and they, were, they actually worked on a printed version of his own draft. That's how they worked. But he was flexible, because he had about 220 uh, articles in his draft, and uh, they ended up with 110. So he's obviously a leader who could listen to, uh, to others. And then he was also party president of the whole Constitutional Assembly in the most important week. And they said that he made us work like animals. Because <laughs> he really put pressure, because he knew the time constraints. Mm. So, and I think that's why he sort of gave up on some of his own ideas, for example. Because um, he just wanted to push this through. And he has an American link, you know, he ha had a son in, in 1814. He was baptized on the 19th of May, I think. And what did he call him? George Benjamin. Ma oh, magnificent, <laughs> superb. <laughs> I knew we picked the right country to celebrate our ties with. That is absolutely great. <laughs>